Hey everybody, how you guys doing? My name is Crazy Jester, and welcome back to another episode of U-Boat, and more importantly, another episode in which we dive in to the full release devlog number four that was released on December 19th last year. Now, this completely took me by surprise. I was not expecting to see another devlog as quickly as one came out, but this one is full of information that uh, no doubt will make everybody here excited, not only for the full release as they have given us maybe a bit of confirmation as to when the full release of the game is coming out, which we will reveal here soon, but also a slew of just updates for um, new ports being added to uh, allowing you to do things as a captain, maybe move things around that make it a little better, to physics of the game, and I have to admit that after reading it, I was definitely very excited about it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right on into this while we look for enemy shipping within the area. So the first thing we'll dive into is the fact that they're adding new ports. And the first of those ports that they're adding is Kiel and as well as the Kiel Canal. Now, I don't know about you, but the fact that they're gonna be adding new ports is gonna be much better as it allows us to look at new scenery, if you will. We're always going to the same ports, whether it be up here in La Spezia or over here at the port of La Rochelle and or you start at the port of Wilhelmshaven up north. It's always the same three. And after a few years of this game being out, let's be honest, it gets a little boring having to go to the same ports every time you restart the mission, no matter how you restart the mission. So the fact that they're adding a new port keel as well as the keel canal is uh, exciting. Now the cool thing about the Kiel Canal is it's going to extend to another avenue that allows you to get to the North Sea a lot faster. Now how much faster that is, I don't know, we have to wait and see. But the sheer fact that you're going to be able to get from one area back to the North Sea is going to be uh, much better rather than having to traverse the whole of Europe, Western Europe going into Northern Europe just to get to the North Sea. So the fact that they're going to add a shortcut, uh, that is greatly going to reduce the amount of time you need to travel to and from places. So Great uh, addition there, happy to see it. Ooh, hello, this is good. Where are you guys heading? Nice large group, eight to 18, before we continue on with this dev diary, but this is a good find right here. Let's go ahead and start setting up our attack. How's the weather outside looking? Oh, weather outside is clear, perfect. We'll go ahead and set up this attack and get ready for that. Now, another port that they've added in the game, which, uh, again, adds to the scenery. And this one has a more historic value in it, which is the, the Port of Brest. And the cool thing about it is that there's an old castle present near the docking area, as well as the historic tower, as they are putting it. Which is pretty cool when you think about it, because not only is this adding, again, that little bit of depth, that bit of scenery that we want to see, something new. But the fact is that it's going to be possible to build a submarine pen there. And unlike other ports, this is going to be one of the closest, if not the closest, French port to busy traffic areas in the North Atlantic, as they had worded it. Now that means you're going to be able to be out there in the fight, and then as soon as you're done with your torpedoes and realize, well, it's time to start uh, reloading, resupplying, and getting back out there to the North Atlantic, you can go to the Port of Brest, re resupply and restock on everything, and then get right back out there in the fight. I think that's going to change a lot of things and make it the journeys a lot more worth it to come back, quickly reload, and then come back or go back into action rather than coming back to your old port, having to go away for a month on end just so you can make sure you can maximize the amount of experience that your uh, troops are getting only to come back and then go back out onto a long deployment. The shorter deployments going back and forth resupplying I think will be a very nice addition to the U-Boat uh, game. Now looking at this convoy really quick, it seems like, it seems like we've got destroyers, along with like little PT boats they have following, but we, and that's gonna be a destroyer as well, definitely. But we do have some big players. Here's, he's gonna be a small player in the game, I feel like. Here's obviously the one we're after, right here. That's the main target. Oh, there's two of them. You know what? I think there actually might be three. Nope, that's a small target. I think we have our two targets picked out. So I wonder if it's going to be these two right here. Now, while we wait for this convoy to actually reach us and get in a good attacking position, the next port that they are adding is going to be the port of, and forgive me if I mispronounce this, but the port of Marseille. And uh, it is going to be located in the Mediterranean Sea. So that will be another port located in the Mediterranean Sea, which will be very beneficial. 
Uh, looking forward to that greatly. Uh, as you can see on the screen, it looks like a very huge port. So hopefully there's going to be some good missions around there that we'll be able to do. So that is really cool to see that they're going to add a new port to the Mediterranean because the doves added this wording themselves. The addition of this port was a part of our larger efforts in this update to add more content to the Mediterranean Sea to make it more of an interesting area of operations. Uh, I wholeheartedly approve in that because as I've been playing in the Mediterranean Sea, let me tell you something, it hasn't been the most exciting. I got to be honest, I would much rather be in the Celtic Sea or the North Sea running missions as it just seemed, it was a lot more exciting. The Mediterranean has been kind of, uh, kind of lame, I'm gonna be honest. So the fact that they're gonna be adding another port, hopefully some more missions, uh, looking forward to it deeply. Okay, we have successfully bypassed the fact that these destroyers have driven right past us, sailed right past us to be exact. So now let's start setting up our attacks. And here's our first big target. This is the closest one to us. Let's go ahead and... Well, we have to start it off, don't we, with a C3. So we know it to be a C3, but now we got to get a velocity, which will at least tell us the velocity of the whole convoy. This could take a minute, as they're not moving too fast, I predict, though. It'll be right around seven knots, as that is about the average for the game. That's kind of another thing. It's not in the devlog, but something I'm kind of hoping for is... Uh, Let's change the pace a little bit. It seems like every convoy you come across, they're usually around seven knots. Sometimes they're a little more, a little less, but not by much. I, I wouldn't mind coming across a convoy where they are like, they're, they're booking it. Hey, they gotta get supplies to England or the Mediterranean, so they are booking it and going uh, 12 knots, 11 knots, as fast as a cargo ship could actually go. It just, it would make it a little bit more difficult to land that shot, and there we go, velocity seven knots. It would just be a little bit more Difficult of a shot to make, and I, I don't know. I kind of, I kind of hope they they do add that, but one is hopeful. All right. Anyways, distance to this target currently, as it stands right now, is 1.7 kilometers. But that's going to change. We know that for a fact. Go ahead and mark that though, and look for the next target really quick, which should just be right around the corner here. There it is. Confirm. Yep, that's it. Going to be a velocity we know of seven knots. We know it to be. Wait a minute. That's not a C3. That is a Liberty cargo ship. Hello. We know it to be again on the same course. Go ahead and set that. Any distance for this one, though? Currently of. Three kilometers. Wow. Go ahead and set that up. 3,000 meters. And let's get everything loaded, shall we? You know, one thing I haven't checked, actually, that I just want to verify before we do these really quickly, really quickly, is I want to get our angle. I feel like we're not exactly at an exact 90 here. I just want to confirm... Especially for the one that we're going at three kilometers. So really quick, again, this is a super rough estimate. We are looking at about 86 degrees. Okay, that changes things. Let's go ahead and get a course. We'll do 86 set. Do about uh, 2,900 meters now because it is moving closer. We have two, one and two oh, loaded. 2.5 meter oh, depth. Right. An dispersion of 15 meters. Let's go ahead and fire as soon as these are ready. Fire. Tubes one away. And tubes two away. Let's go ahead and unlock. Find our original target now. Lock onto him. He's going to be a little further away, so we'll do 1800 meters just to make sure. Go ahead. We, excuse me. We already know it's a C3. And tubes three and four. Get ready for this. Now we're gonna have to wait until these are about halfway across before we can send the next tube. So we'll do a little bit of time compression here, right around there. Go ahead and fire. Tubes three and tubes four are away. 
Perfect. Heading go below the water here. And we will drop depth to 40 meters in preparation of getting underneath the uh, prop blast in the water for this uh, vessel right here. Now, hopefully, if I've timed this right, uh, these will hit first, obviously, and these won't be too far behind to give this a chance to actually increase its throttle and get away. Um, three kilometers away, that is a that is a far shoot. So, as it's looking right now, it almost kind of looks like it's they might not hit. We're hoping so, but it's going to be close. Ooh, they just missed. Just missed. There we go, though. At least we got some hits on the C3. So we managed to strike one ah, three kilometers away. Small minor miscalculation on my end for getting that. But that's okay. That is why we're out here just to do some patrolling missions. Let's go ahead and set forward. Forward three, please. Forward four, actually. And we'll try and get into the, again, the blast of this Empire Glory and hide us from the destroyers. And there goes the C3. As you can see, the health is going down rapidly, taking on a lot of water. Only a sliver of health left. Now, while I have this perfect picture of the C3 tipping over, while there are no explosions as of yet, although there was a fire brewing, maybe we get some explosions. That brings us to the next thing that they are adding and releasing on the full release of U-Boat. And I am very, very excited about this release and that is the explosion physics now things on this that we're going to see are improved physics of the explosions and not only that but as you can see in the picture that i've displayed here for you there is actually a sailor flying through the air now that's a nice addition because now usually when you strike a boat with a torpedo and there are sailors on board and there's none here to currently show you but generally there's no sense of urgency uh, amongst the sailors they just kind of lollygag around and walk around as if nothing happened and it just kind of takes the immersion out of the experience of the game you got this nice strike on this boat and you want to see panic and havoc on the boat because that's what would be going on in a proper simulator or life scenario if this was to happen and you just see a sailor kind of casually walking by as if nothing happened however in this one we're going to see uh, sailors flying through the air possibly or running around and, and actually acting like something's going on and their boat had just been struck by a, U a torpedo excuse me and they need to save it so very nice uh, addition the devs are saying that this was something they always wanted to implement as it was an immersion killer when there was no proper reaction modeled on the enemy crew so they're doing the extra mile here and adding the physics which is going to drastically change your experience in U-Boat. So super excited for that. All right, as it stands right now, it looks like we are. Go ahead and drop down to two if we can and try and match speed with this as the U-Boats are coming. Looks like he's actually increased. So we'll go speed three here. And we're just gonna start doing our zigzag formation here. They can't do anything if we are with the ship. They might know we're here, but they still can't do very much. We have our electric engines ready to rock and roll. And the next thing we'll do is, as we're following this, there we go, bombs released, depth charges released. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the C3 that we annihilated and we're gonna hide under it so that no more depth charges can be uh, sent our way. Now let's go ahead and see if we can even see those depth charges under the water. And while we're under the water, surprisingly, that brings us to yet another update and addition that they are adding to U-Boat. Now this is from the devs themselves on the underwater upgrades. On popular requests, underwater environment is now much brighter than it used to be, which coincides with the realistic look. It's now possible to use periscopes deeper under the water and use it to look at enemy ships passing above depth charges or mines on the seabed. Now I think that's a great addition because as you can see we're only 50 meters under the sea right now but you would swear we were like 300 to 400 meters where it's getting darker and darker the deeper we go but we're only 50 meters which isn't that 
terribly deep and yet it looks like it's nighttime. So the addition of a brighter environment, being able to see the boats passing above clearly or the depth charges, being able to look through your periscope at the explosions that are happening around you, that's going to be pretty exciting. It's going to add that little bit of adrenaline rush for the players that want that greater immersion. Now I don't know if they're going to be, it's going to be bright all the way down. It doesn't matter if you're, uh, what's the deepest we can go? If you're 220 meters under the sea floors, it's going to be just as bright as it is when you're 30 meters. I don't know if they're going to be adjusting the brightness, excuse me, the deeper you go, but it's a nice change. We'll see how that goes. All right, we are nearing that C3. Let's go ahead and stop all engines. And hopefully we'll hide right under it. Perfect. Now the destroyers can't come here because they'd run into the Empire, which is still has a sliver of health left. They have to move on. They can kind of patrol around the area a little bit and hope to find me, but now that I've gone into silent mode, let's go do a little bit of time compression. They have to can protect the rest of the convoy, especially that Liberty right here that got away. But we'll do the time compression just to see what's going on. Death charges away. So I, I think they're just guessing at this point. And they have completely moved away. Perfect. There's the last of the destroyers heading away. I think we are good. What we're going to go do right now is go ahead and surface the boat. We are far enough away. Surface the boat completely and finish this off with a round of AP and or HE. While we are waiting to surface the boat though and get everything ready for striking this C3 and sending it to the bottom, the next update, I'm telling you, there's a lot of updates that they've done for this dev diary number four and I'm excited about it. They're really, they're putting their all into this game and it's absolutely phenomenal to see. The next thing that they're gonna add is the upgrade to uh, the interface tools. And really quickly before we get into that, let's go ahead and get our crew members on the deck gun. There we go. We'll do a little bit of time compression. Smoke over the horizon detected. We don't want to be dealing with that for too long. Go ahead and switch over to AP if we need to. And again, this thing only has a sliver of health left, so get this down on the bottom. Riddle this thing with AP all over the place. And we can switch over. There we go. Perfect. Now, while we're in this, this brings us to, yet again, another upgrade, another addition that they're adding that they've mentioned in Dev Diary 4, which is awesome. They are going to be doing upgrades to the interface tools. And the great thing about it is just look at how many interface tools are up at once. He's got a total of four versus what you have to do, which is you have to go into each individual section here, depending on which interface you're looking for. As you can see there, though, they have four of the same or four different interfaces on the screen at the same time. And another thing that you're going to be able to do is actually move them around on your screen. So if you don't like them on the right, you prefer them on the left, or the better view on the bottom. However, you want to set those interfaces up, you can do that. Now, a big thing we should take away from this is the fact that the developer team of U Boat listened to the community. They set it in the picture again. I'll bring it up here for you. As you can see, it states, it's a long-standing request from the community that we are happy to declare as done, bringing this user or upgrade to the interface tools. So I really, I can't stress this enough, how awesome it is that we have a game developer, the developers and creators of U-Boat that are actively listening to their community. We, the players, the people who are purchasing this game, who are putting the hundreds of hours, tens of hours, some I dare say probably even have thousands of hours into this game and the community is literally telling this game developer, hey, this is what we would like, this is what we feel would make this game a lot more enjoyable for us as well as a majority of the player base, we would love to see this added or we think you should add this. And this developing company, this developer for their U-Boats, they're listening. They are reading the forums. They are taking our feedback and they are implementing them into their U-Boat updates, which is awesome. They're not just reading these things and saying like, hey, yeah, we'll think about it, maybe, or just kind of reading at not giving us any kind of answer. They're actively listening to the community. That speaks, I, I, I'm speechless. It's, it's so nice to have a, a, a developer that actually listens to the community because we are telling you how to make your game better and they're listening. 
freaking awesome. Now the big question is, right, is when is this release date? When is this full release out completely? Now while this is not a 100% confirmation, I'll throw it up on the screen here. So here it is, the release date estimate. Our current estimate to finish this work is March to April of 2024. The main thing that extends the development time right now are interior models for the new U-boats or new playable U-boats, which I've already explained in my past videos regarding Dev Diaries. Uh, that will be introduced in the full release. You can read more about them in the Dev Diary, and this is all on Steam. You can go to the U-boat page on Steam and read about these Dev Diaries, all four of them that have been released. But the big thing is, is for you, the viewer, who are watching this video right now, if you guys have anything that you want to add to the U-Boat, you think would better U-Boat, something that they haven't thought of or you go into the forums and someone else hasn't thought of, it could be something very simple and very minor, but makes a huge difference in the long run that someone just hasn't thought of to say to the developers, you can do that. You can go to the forums right now on the U-Boat website, and as you can see right here in the second paragraph, excuse me, while our artist is busy finishing the U-Boats, the rest of the team, among other things, gather feedback on the forum. So if you have something you've always wanted, added, or changed, feel free to post it. It's important to us to make you satisfied with the upcoming release. So there's still time. If you have anything that you want to add to the game, please, it's the forums, read up on it, see if someone if someone hasn't already mentioned the thing you're thinking about, get it in the forums, and you very well might see that added before the estimated March-April release date. And I'm sure there's going to be much more dev diaries coming out in that time. Uh, really quick as well, something that they're going to be adding, I don't think I will be taking part of this, but it's still a cool addition for those of you that use the VR headsets. They are adding, and here you go, the U-Boat, the Silent Wolf VR. So for those of you that utilize uh, the virtual reality headsets, uh, there you go. You've got a Silent Wolf VR game coming out. Anyways, as we sail off into the sunset here, I think that's going to do it for this episode, ladies and gentlemen. Please, if you have enjoyed the video, comment down below. Let me know what you guys thought of the video. Likewise, let me know what you guys would like to see in the future updates and full release of you. But let's have a conversation about this. There's a lot of things I'm super excited about. So far, the big things I'm excited about. I gotta say the number one is the the overall physics that they're gonna be adding, the different and changed physics of the game. I think that's really gonna add the immersion to the game. But what do you like? What are you excited for? What's coming out that you're really looking forward to? Likewise, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up as it helps get this video out to many more so they can also be informed of the news and the release, a full release of U-Boat. And if you aren't already and would like to see more videos on this uh, channel as well as this video game, please consider subscribing. But in the meantime, I hope you all have an incredible day and happy hunting. Take it easy, okay?